In the past, when I was young, we'd stand and proudly sing. When they played the national anthem, we sung God Save the King. By the rules of a session in 52, it became God Save the Queen. And over the years, as we reflect, how wonderful she's been. Throughout the years, she's served us well, with Prince Philip at her side. Her service to the nation and Commonwealth could never be denied. She's held her noble head up high through every royal scandal, some that many ordinary folk would find hard to handle. Life's not without its ups and downs, as every family knows. She's had her share of problems, but she never lets it show. The fire at Windsor Castle was enough to make her cry. We saw her at her lowest ebb, Annas Horribles, as she described. I remember her coronation day in 1953. Who cares if it was raining? The crowds had a lovely young queen to cheer. Nobody was complaining. Folks dressed in their finest clothes. There were parties in the streets. Houses decorated with buntings and flags. Tables laden with food to eat. Celebrations went on throughout the day. Many children in fancy dress. With games and competition. A day, a day of happiness. I remember a song called The Golden Coach. How true the lyrics foretold. For as she rode through London town, in that coach there's a heart of gold. Those who were more fortunate, and very few people had the means, watched flickering pictures in black and white on 12-inch television screens. I went to Malaya, went, went up to uh, Salaga, then, then it moved to Pahang. And, um, and we were actually in North Kuala Lumpur uh, for the Queen's coronation. But we had a parade on the, on the Padang, the, 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 the um, big public grass space. And it was rather fun because there were our chaps, you know, you really uniform, both smart, so, and, and Malay, Malay police. They have two sorts, uh, the uh, city uniform and jungle clothing. And, um, and we had some Dayaks from Borne Borneo, who were trackers for us. And we had um, the local um, Aborigines. And the combination, uh, we, we, um, well, you couldn't see it, no television in those days, of course. But we actually had um, a, a film of the coronation seven days after it had been happened. Yes. Um, we watched that, yes, and then flown out. That's right. And um, the um, the first comet jet liners were, were, were flying then in the open air, sitting, sitting in whatever seats you could scrounge or arrange. Yes, it was very pleasant. Um, my dad bought a television especially for Coronation Day. It was the strangest looking thing uh, because the, the cathode ray, I think it's called, the screen bit and the workings behind came separately from the case, which was distinctly homemade, um, very large, about as the case was about as big as the top of that this table there. And we were, I think we were the only family in the street to have one. So of course everyone came in to watch it. I thought the Queen was the most beautiful, beautiful woman. 
I just like the Queen so much. And um, I still remember the coronation. Now what year, is, don't ask me what year, but I do remember the coronation. 53, I had a scrapbook and I used to cut out all the pictures for the newspaper and I stick it on. Princess Margaret, Queen Elizabeth, the Duke, you know, I used to stick all the pictures, great big scrapbook. And I used to love looking at it. I just loved my scrapbook with all my Queen, with the Queen there. I used to love those beautiful crown that she used to wear, the beautiful clothes. They were so glamorous. I just loved them, you know. I did enjoy it. And then she came to India. I still remember the time she came to India because she went to Bangalore. She liked Bangalore very much. Queen Elizabeth liked Bangalore very much. She came to Calcutta. And I can remember being on the street with a little flag and, you know, waving my little flag and the Queen coming along and we are singing away. It was so beautiful. I've only ever seen the Queen on the television. I do remember watching the coronation. Um, not in our house because we didn't have a, my parents didn't have a television at that time. But this was in a friend's house and it was a little small screen. Yeah. <laughs> I did once, uh, Princess Margaret, I was at college when she married and um, Yes, in, in those days, <coughs> you couldn't do as you liked. You could at a weekend have a, you could stay out until midnight. But there was no restriction on what time you could go out in the morning. <laughs> so three or four of us, we went down and we sat on the pavement opposite Westminster Abbey. Um, all, you know, over the Saturday night until after the wedding. <laughs> we, we get royal warrant. So all the bags what she's cu cutting now is still loner bags. As I said, I, I got the impression she was like a butterfly, sort of so delicate. She was standing beside me and sort of, uh, you can't even describe such a, yeah, so delicate, so, and um, I was showing her the piece of leather and all this. And then she said, what do you do with the marks on the leather? I said, well, we put it on the back of the back, you know, not the front. We just hide it. She said, just what you think, she said. <laughs> Well, I remembered when I was small going to school in Guyana, when she was in, um, had the carnation, we were given in a school rust, and um, they may, used to make something like Kool-Aid drink, and a bag of rust, and a, a cup with a photograph to take home. Mug, a mug, it was really a mug <laughs> to take home. And then we had an... I think when she was married, we had a thing, yeah. And then when she was carnated, <laughs> had a carnation. And then another thing, when was her last jubilee, a diamond jubilee? I applied for tickets. I was, I just bought my laptop and I was surfing and I'm um, thinking and I saw free stuff. And then I came down and I see um, tickets to go to the um, diamond jubilee. So I rang my neighbor and said, would you like to go to the Diamond Jubilee? He said, yes, but he wasn't sure, yes. And I said, okay, I'll apply for two tickets. So we got two tickets, came specially gold and gray, then everything, delivered specially, two tickets, and we had to go down very early <laughs> to get go through security and all of that. But we were in the palace grounds, me and my neighbor. It was just um, horse racing and they had big telly and all of that to see, show people who can't sit near. But they're just parading, you know, around in their uh, carriages and going around. Everybody went by the river bank and all of that to see the parade, but we were in the ground. My uh, neighbor said, you didn't tell your daughter? I said, no, not the thing to tell her. This is important thing you didn't tell your daughter. <laughs> Mm. 
I do have a memory. But whereas we always were happy memories, but I know it isn't. Well, I, at the time, on that day, I was working at a place called Highbury Corner. Some of you probably know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and my father and my brother. And we were told that, that uh, I, look, I can't remember the time, was it 12 or 1? That we were, we were going to uh, pay two minutes respect to the dead king. So we decided to walk up to Highbury Corner to see what would happen. And I couldn't believe what happened. London went silent. Absolutely silent. Bus drivers had to get out of their cabs and wear a black tie and stand at the side of the bus. Uh, tube train drivers were not allowed to. They, 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 what they did, they stopped in a station and stood to attention. Um, uh, I can remember all men were wearing black ties and there was, there was no exception. There was no car honking, nothing. All cars stopped and many, many drivers got out of their cars and stood at the side of their car as well. It was a tremendous mark of respect to the dead king. I don't know whether any of you remember that, that, what that day was like or not, but it was absolutely somber. Um, and something that you would never see again. Um, but one has to remember, he was a very brave man. He had this terrible stammer. You all know that one. And uh, if you go to uh, Windsor Castle, you go to the St. George's Chapel in Windsor, there's a gate there with a plaque on it. And it's a speech that the king made. And I used to take people there, do it, and I used to read it to them. Um, and I said, just imagine if you had a, a stammer in your speech like he did, what a brave man he was. He was very brave. Uh, uh, he was also, the royal family were supposed to go to uh, Canada, you know that? And who, who refused? The king. And he said, no, we stay here. If the people have to stay, we have to stay. And so we're not going to. So they built a runway which all of you probably have seen, don't even know what it is, but it still exists to this day. If you go to Kensington Gardens today, uh, that walking, going right across the park is a very wide path, very wide indeed. It was in fact a runway. A lot of people don't know that, but it was a runway. And they could, a light aircraft could land there, would have picked the Royal Family up, flown to Ireland, picked up a bigger plane and gone, gone to Canada, but the King said, no, we're not going. So this is my memory. Um, I've got a rather long and rambling um, thing. When, in the 1940s, my father was a railway station master, and from 1943 to 1948, he was station master at a village station called Caythorpe in Lincolnshire, and it was quite close to Cranwell Airfield, three or four miles away. Uh, and, um, and when the king came to Cranwell to give medals, to a, a airman at Cranwell, he couldn't stop it. He couldn't spend the tra world train. Couldn't spend the night overnight at our station because it was too open. It would have been visible. He used to go on to the next station, Leadenham, uh, where the um, siding went alongside the Grantham Lincoln Road. It was covered by trees. You couldn't see, you couldn't see the world train there. Uh, and, um, and one time when the world train was coming, the British policeman. Stood on the on the bridge over there where case walk uh, and um, uh, but um, they went to get to let them. Uh, the king and queen went off to Cranwell, did some decorating, and came back. But the station master, Mr. Holiday, had um, had three got three daughters, and uh, they were de like daredevils, and um, their um, station master's the station master's dog. Got in a cat, cat got in a row with the Queen's dogs uh, and had to, be, they had to be separated physically. Uh, anyway, an hour or so later, the station master's wife was sitting in the station and then a query knocked on the door and said, uh, um, The Queen would like to come and, uh, and, and have a chat with you. Will that be all right? Uh, she said, of course, so she went mad, got out the best china, made a cup of tea, and um, the Queen came over to 
Mrs. Holiday's station house at Kate uh, Lendham and spent half an hour chatting. And uh, that's, uh, that's the nearest I got to the Royal Family, oh, well, about two miles. <laughs> Well, the one thing that I remember about the royal family that comes first to mind is that my parents bought a brand new television for the Prince Charles investiture as the Prince of Wales. And that's about it. What do you remember about that? Well, just the fact that we had a tele we didn't have a television before that. I mean, the only television that uh, I ever saw was next doors or my grandfather's. And I mean, my, my grandfather's television was, if you call it small, that would be insulting it because it was very small. You know, one of those typical 50s screens, which was only sort of about yeah, six know. inches from corner to corner yeah. sort of thing. Um, but yeah, yes, um, that was my, that would be my one royal memory, really.